Hallelujah. I'm going to let you go back to your seat because what I have to give you, I want you to get down. And it's a little bit hard for you right there, but keep your spirit on the altar. Did you hear what I said? Now, what about you at home? Keep your, put your popcorn away now. Do, come on. Get it quiet in there. If you got me on your phone and you're doing your dishes, they'll wait. Because we got to focus tonight. Because when we focus, the greatest number of people focused on the smallest point yields the greatest result. That's what agreement is all about. So let's get an agreement tonight. It doesn't matter to me if you're in South Carolina or you're in South Africa. Doesn't matter to me if you're in Pennsylvania or Pakistan. Doesn't matter to me if you're in the Bahamas or Uganda. We are ready tonight to make a deposit. I'm going to share something tonight I have never shared before. So you share right now and tell everybody you know, come on over here. Come on over here. Pastor's got a word for you tonight. I've got a life-changing, history-altering word for you tonight. If you get it, you'll never be the same. I don't know if you can get it or not. You have to clear away the distractions and you have to focus. Today, all day long, there has been a spirit, a spirit of distraction, a spirit that causes people not to be able to pay attention. No, 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 you didn't hear what I just said. A spirit. Do you understand that Satan sends forth specific spirits at specific times for specific purposes, demon power? Today, think about your day and see if I'm a prophet. You have been distracted, unable to focus, unable to pay attention, and my spirit has been focused. And so I pick up all that distraction. People that usually on this platform are locked in had a zombie spirit on them tonight. Just a zombie spirit, just a numb spirit. Now it didn't bother me that much because I've known since about 7.45 this morning that that spirit was going to be loosed. Distracting you from your job. Distracting you in your prayer time. Distracting you in your worship. Just a numb feel, feeling. Dr. Oral Roberts shared with me that in the latter times of my ministry, in the later years of my ministry, there would be loosed at specific times a spirit of stupor. Do you remember it? He told me that. There will be demon spirits released to the people. Now, I, I'm not against doctors. I'm not against medication. But when 40% of adult Americans are on some form of antidepressant, there's a numbing. You have to be numbed to get through life. A spirit of stupor. Television made in was eight but now six minute segments so that your brain verifiably turns off. Do you know that your cell phone strobes? You don't know that, do you? Your cell phone, if you think of a moving picture, now some of you are not old enough to 
know this and they don't teach anything in school. So l let me share it with you. A motion picture got its name correctly because a motion picture is a combination of pictures. A cartoon. If you ever, we talked about Walt Disney last week. If, if you've ever seen cartoons be illustrated, it is a series of minuscule changes per drawing put together at a high rate of speed that give the illusion of constancy. But it's not constant, and neither is your cell phone. Your cell phone strobes. It's actually flashing millions of times per minute. It's not one constant picture. It's going like that. I, I, I came in contact with a lot of this and what I'm sharing with you right now, which I'm sharing by the Holy Spirit. It's not something I had prepared, but I am prophetically telling you what's happened in your life today. I have not come across one staff member that I've had to deal with today that was not distracted can't listen, can't focus on everything. When I come in here, the prophet of prayer there is, is trying to stir you and you are unstirrable. None. I had to walk around on the front row and ask some of the leaders, what's wrong with that one? Oh my, I don't know. Well, I know it's a spirit of stupor. And a lot of it comes because you can't stop staring at that phone. It numbs you. Television is made in eight minute, six minute now segments. Why? It's designed to get you like this. Now you know that what I'm telling you is true. You watch it, you don't get stimulated. It's the opposite effect. I was watching uh, uh, Dr. Lowe, I was watching, it was a Christmas Eve, and I was at my parents' house. Uh, my children were young, they were maybe eight and 10 years old, something like that, and I had found a whole box full of eight millimeter movies. Now before you had cell phones, you had eight millimeter cameras. I have one in my study. It's a, a brownie eight millimeter camera. Now when you watch an eight millimeter film, it hadn't advanced enough to run the pictures fast enough and, and so you don't know it, but your eye is picking up that first the hand is here, and then the hand is here, and then the hand is here. You don't visually see it, but your mind picks it up. I turned it off after about an hour, and I began to heave all my Christmas Eve dinner. I was so dizzy and disoriented. And I remembered it was that eight millimeter flashing. Get you off balance. That's what a cell phone does. It just does it at a more rapid pace. So whenever you feel yourself becoming that way, Turn it off. I made a whole lot of people concerned because on Father's Day, until about eight o'clock the next day, I turned my cell phone off and people were getting offended. I can't believe I told him Happy Father's Day and he didn't comment to me. I turned my phone off. At some point, you got to detach from the distraction. Now everybody 
shout right there where you are make yourself shout make yourself lift up holy hands without wrath or doubting now shout words shout about the goodness of god come on same volume focus yourself ah I'm teaching you right now how to focus so that you can be ready tonight so that you can be ready tonight so that you can be ready tonight to have a spiritual dream or a spiritual vision to change the trajectory of your life if you believe it shout now for 30 seconds Tell that spirit to lose its hold on you in Kuwait. Tell that spirit to lose its hold on you in the United Kingdom, in Ghana, in Sweden, in Indonesia, in Jamaica. Shout again. Shout. Souls hang in the balance. The salvation of your family hangs in the balance. The trajectory of the nation hangs in the balance. You're important, you count. All right, you may be seated. I don't know why I don't have water. I, I don't know why that is. Because everybody's distracted, that's why. Because everybody's got a spirit of stupor. I never come to this platform without water. So why tonight? what I've just been talking about. Shout! I'm not shouting you, having you shout for emotional reasons. I'm having you shout to focus yourself. Get your footing. Training you. You don't know what you're gonna face when you get home. You may go out tonight to get milk and never come back. Be seated. It's time to get serious. All right, I'm gonna get through some of this. You ready? Shout spiritual you shout at home. Come on, make that backslidden husband of yours nervous. Shout tonight. I'm ready to receive spiritual dreams and visions. In China, in Finland, in the Cayman Islands, in Austria, in Singapore, in the dormitories of Valor Christian College. Here we go. Dreams and visions. Dreams and visions are the stock and staple of the spirit realm. They are the commerce and the culture of heaven. Did you get all that? See, you thought you did, didn't you? They are the stock and staple. They are the commerce and culture of heaven. Dreams and visions. Spiritual dreams and visions. I brought you one message in this series about how to stay free from demon spirits trying to entertain your mind and your emotions in your sleep. If you didn't get that one, I'd get it. This is a master class. Say, this is not for babies. This is not for beginners. This is a master class in the language of heaven. 
which is so often expressed in spiritual dreams and visions. Now, I have been through these verses every week. God help me just to get through them quickly tonight. Job chapter 33, verse 14. For God speaks once, yes, twice. Shout as loud as you can. Speak again, Lord. Speak again, God. Your servant is listening. Let him know you're listening. Whew. My brother-in-law, Rick, did an amazing job in, in, in Valor internship, internship devotion today. Just a masterful job. Speak again. He said, I don't just ever, ever just read my Bible. I talk it out loud with volume because I want my ears to hear it and I want the devil to hear it. Somebody shout, hey devil, I'm awake again. I'm going to be a while here. Y'all just get comfortable. For God speaks once. Yes, again, he speaks twice. Speak God, our Father and our God. Whew. Speak twice. And if I miss it, speak three times. But whatever you do, don't take your spirit from me. The Holy Ghost talks. I want to, I want to talk to you tonight about this subject. Dreams and visions talk. There are no silent dreams and visions. And once they start talking, they never stop. Wow. Wow. Because the prophet said what God does, he does forever. But then he says, I got hurt. He said, yet man does not perceive it. Now he's not talking about you can't perceive it. He's talking here in, uh, of the humanistic portion of man. Your spirit man can perceive it. Do you know that what's happening in you right now is greater than what's happening to you? I'm gonna try this group over here. I said, do you understand that what is happening in you right now is greater than what's happening to you? Your Bible says, would you rather have good digestion or well-bodied hair? One you can see, one you can't. You can do without well-bodied hair, but you can't do without digestion. Why do we spend so much time on the well-bodied hair? Why do we spend so much time on our mind, on our emotions? There's an entire movement, Pastor Chris, Miss Yolanda, in the body of Christ right now, in the realm of quote, air quotes, praise and worship that is 100% soul-based. It has no spiritual basis to it at all. It wasn't written in the spirit. It wasn't sung in the spirit. The melody is not of the spirit. No, I don't have time. Say my spirit gets it. Then jump on your feet and pray in the Holy Ghost at the top of your lungs right there at home. Right there at home. Verse 15. Verse 15, in a dream, in a vision of the night, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men in slumber on their beds. When are you supposed to have a spirit of slumber or stupor? When you're in your bed. Then he opens, when? When does God open? I just read it to you. 
It's probably up there on the screen. When does God do it? When you're in sleep. Then he opens the ears of men. He's not talking about thee. Right, right. Those are open. If a dog starts barking outside your window, you'll hear it. He's not talking about that. That's why he said, having ears to hear, they hear not. Because they can't differentiate between their soulish man and their physical man and their spirit man. Write down somewhere right now. Write it down and then put it where you'll see it. When I was 22 years old, I wrote down on my desk, I am a spirit man first. First. He opens the ears of men, seals their instruction. In other words, God's going to put something in you and seal it in you while you sleep but not if you stared at a blue screen for an hour before you tried to go to sleep it won't work somebody just say that's not how this works that he might turn aside why does he do it so that he might turn aside men from his conduct god's going to spare you from things while you sleep if you go to bed right and conceal pride from a man while he's sleeping he keeps back his soul listen to this he keeps back his soul from hell don't ever I hear the Holy Spirit don't ever be put to sleep by a doctor without interceding before you do. Why do you think people wake up saying the craziest things? They'll go to cursing. I mean, just look on YouTube. There's a thousand pictures of it videos of, of people waking up after they've been put to sleep. Why? They didn't seal that thing. Don't walk in a hospital to visit somebody before you prayed. Don't walk in a Motel 6 or whatever it is, hotel room, without casting every devil out of it before you get in it. Do you know the crazy people that have been in that bed and what they've been doing? That'll get on you. I'm trying to preach. I can't get past the, the text. Listen, in a little bit, I'm going to tell you how you can get these, your hands on these. I, I'm not, look, look. If there's ever a time you needed to know about this, it's right now. This is an entire workbook and handbook that I've written on the subject of demonology. End evil and live free. Do you know there's evil all around you? There's evil over at your next door neighbors. Did you walk your property? It's quiet in here. I can't hear you online. Did you ever walk your property and put oil all around it and tell the devil, this is off limits to you? In just a few minutes now, how you can get a hold of the audio and video series and the study guide and workbook called Demonology, in the Evil and Live Free. Demons are at work right now, unlike I have ever seen them in my life. The anger, the rage, the hate. That whole thing was brought on 
because that beautiful African-American girl married a white young man. And the neighborhood got enraged. What is going on? Stop listening to these people. These race baiters and Leninist and Marxist, Marxist God haters, church haters. Stop! Somebody shout online, I need somebody to just help me a little bit. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna hurry. In the Acts chapter 2, verse 17, say this with me. You can't just read the Bible. You have to read the Bible. Watch this now. In the last days, shout, that's it. This is it. It will be, says God, says God, that I, God, will pour out, what's the next word? What's the next word? Nope. Nope. That's, that is a wrong, that is a wrong, that, totally wrong. The word says, I will pour out of my spirit. Take it down. Just take it down. If we can't get it right, just take it down. See what I'm saying? Stupor. Distract. I think I know what it says. Distract. It matters. In Acts, he pours out of. In Joel, he pours out. Those are two different things. In Joel, he poured the Holy Spirit out. But in the new covenant, he pours his spirit out of you. You wait no more. Oh, pour it out, Lord. He already did. He's waiting on you to pour it out. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. I may call a dominion camp meeting any minute. Preach the whole thing myself. If you want me to, type it in. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Man, I love to teach you. You can't just read the Bible, dear heart. You have to read the Bible. The word prophesy there has nothing to do with outwardly, audibly, publicly speaking the word of God. It should actually be translated the word rave. R-A-V, as in victor, victory, E, Ray. Another translation says, to play the part of the fool. Wow. Has anybody told you lately that the way you're practicing your religion is foolish? That shouting is foolish? That dancing is foolish? That staying in the word is foolish? That's what God said would happen to his church in the last day, we would play the part of raving fools. I don't have time. I don't have time. Uh, are y'all still there? I wish you'd type in there and let me know you're. Robin Rounds, you come out of that hospital in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Be made whole right now, right now, right now. Nora Akawumi, I love you. Thank you for always commenting on my social. I pay people, but they can't get around to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Nora. I love you and every City Harvest Network pastor. I love you. And I'm getting ready to share some things with you that I'm not gonna share with anybody else in the world. I am going to sit down and teach you in a place 
like, I don't know what we're going to call it, yet we may call it, what are we going to call it? The storehouse where you and you alone will have a code to sit in a room with me and just let me teach you. Nobody else can get it. Nobody. Whoo, I feel God tonight. Of course, I've been focused all day, except for when everybody else tried to distract me. Watch this now. Your young men shall see visions. Huh. I'm 64. I had my first open vision in 1986, I believe, 1985. I was 28 years old. Not 64, 28. I am preaching tonight, and every time I take my Bible and microphone from a vision when I was 28. In a minute, I'm going to let you see 28-year-old PRP. I'm going to take you to the moment when the back wall of a 1,200-seat building disappeared and clearer than I can see that red light on that camera, this played out in front of me. 28. How many of you are younger than 28? Of course, I was sanctified. I was living holy. I wasn't out doing sexual things that God's word rebukes. I wasn't looking at what I had no business looking at. Elder Canfield and I were talking yesterday, I believe it was, and both of us, our entire adult lives, have struggled not with trying to do things like read our Bibles, pray. We have struggled with not doing it to the point where we are exhausted. And you have trouble praying 15 minutes, bless your heart. You're distracted. But there's good news. It can break off you tonight. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Habakkuk 2, verse 3. For... So, for the vision, the what? Vision. Or dream, same thing. Vision is in the daytime, in the open. Night vision is a dream. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. A time to receive it and a time for its fulfillment. You missed that. So five years from now, you'll never have it. A time for it to be given and received and a time for it to be manifested. They are not the same thing. Here we go. This vision that I'm going to share with you took 30 years for God to give me a major interpretation of a section of the vision. 30 years, and I sought him every day. Glad I didn't give up. Glad I didn't get distracted. Glad, glad I didn't let some girl turn my head and my vision and my life. Psalm Habakkuk 2.2. 2. For the vision is for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. Say visions talk. 
It will not lie, say visions tell the truth. Woo! Though the vision tarry, wait for it. For you have need of patience. After that, you've done the perfect will of God so that eventually you may receive the promise of the vision. It will surely come. Shout, I shall have it. Takes 10 years, I'll have it. Takes 15, 20, 25, 30 years. I shall have it. You want your husband back, quit dating other men. Look, the church doesn't even know what to do. When I was growing up, if the word divorce was said from the pulpit, people hung their heads in shame. Your Bible says we can no longer even blush. Nineteen seventy four. <laughs> How many of you were not alive? Come on, make me feel really bad. 1974, huh. driving a fire engine red Trans Am with hijackers on the back and mag wheels and big beefy tires and 450 horsepower. Yeah. Hush, Miss Deborah, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Miss Deborah's like, oh, I don't remember that. 1974 is the first time I put a Bible in one hand and a microphone in the other. I was 17 years old. I was a little more advanced than Miss Deborah when she first started preaching. Miss Deborah told sinners, you can find the book of Revelation, or no, you can find John 3.16 in the book of Revelation. That's what she said. 1975, a year later, I graduated from high school. I graduated in the half of my class that made the top half possible. I did not graduate magna cum laude or summa cum laude. Dr. Burke Holder, I graduated, oh laude. <laughs> but I was the first person in the history of my high school, they started a hall of fame and made me the first inductee. Wait, 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 wait for the vision, wait for the vision. 1976, I was driving down the road, down the road right out here. My mother was in the seat beside me. I was, I was having all kinds of physical problems that no doctor could explain. And my mother looked at me and she said, what do you want to do with your life? I said, maybe I want to preach. And I said, it just like that. And she didn't like it. She said, she didn't do what most parents do. She said, I'll tell you one thing. You want to preach, you better know it's God. And you better get ready for the most difficult life anybody could ever live. And if you're going to do it, go get in school and learn something. Valor Christian College dot edu online and on campus. In 1977, I was a sophomore in Bible college and a couple ladies who knew my mother came over and said, you're in Bible college, aren't you? I said, yes. They said, well, we, we'd like somebody to teach us the Bible. Will you teach us the Bible next Thursday? And my mother said, he sure will. She pushed me my whole life. She, he's, she said, he sure will. And I said, okay, come on over to mom and them's. 
at 7 o'clock on Thursday night, and 17 people showed up for Billy Graham. 17 people eaten up by mosquitoes, sitting in a barbecue shelter house. There were five of them who were not family. So we actually started with five people. Say, the vision will speak. Wait for it. 1979, with our own hands, my father and two uncles and three cousins and me built a 180-seat frame building on Wright Road in Pickerington in the middle of a cornfield on five acres of ground that I went to 12 people and asked them for $1,000 to build a church and they, because they wouldn't give us a loan for the church until we had the land clear and free. And my mother said, well, go find 12 people that believe in your vision. Most people pastoring 1,000 people couldn't find five people that really believed in their vision especially once you start paying them. Then they believe in the paycheck. Then they believe in the paycheck, not the vision. What year am I in? 1979. We opened that 180 seat little building. 11 pews on each side, 12 feet long, a four foot aisle in the middle and a two foot aisle on the sides. How do you know? I built it. I knew exactly what it was. And that's the year I met Miss Joni. And she became my vision. And I had to wait seven years to marry her. Some of y'all can't wait 17 minutes. Wait till you graduate to get married. Wait till you have a job. Wait till you can support a family. I can't. I can't wait. It would be fun if it wasn't so true. In 1982, we doubled the size of that little building to 400 seats. That same year, I said, we're going to have a Bible school here, World Word of Life Bible Institute, Elder Canfield, Word of Life Bible Institute, 1982, it opened its doors. Today, it is a four-year fully accredited degree-granting institution. It took 32 years for that to happen. Whew. A year later, 1983, I had the unspeakable joy, honor of meeting Dr. Lester Sumrall. I'll tell you about how it happened sometime. I don't have time tonight. In that same year, 1983, little old me in a 400 seat building got invited to be a guest on the Trinity Broadcasting Network, 1983. I studied for a month. They told me I'd have three minutes at the end of the three-hour program. I memorized four full typed pages of notes for three minutes. That's what you call being uh, prepared. Preparation for dreams and visions is never wasted time. Say, I'm having the time of my life. August the 7th of that same year, what year is it? 1983. August the 7th of that same year, would you stand up, Elder Canfield? That's the first time he ever came to our church and heard me preach. <laughs> 
and look at me, looking at you. That's a country song. Look at me, looking at you after all these years. I love you more than I could ever express. You have been an example to the entire body of Christ of an Aaron and a Her that doesn't have to have the front stage and be first and everything named after them, but are willing to lay your life down for a vision you believed in. Don't get bored. Don't get bored. 1984, June, June of 1984, we had built a brand new 1,200 seat building. 1,200 seats. In 1984, in the middle of a cornfield, with no backing, no help, no money, but a vision on the 30th day of 1985, in that 1200 seat building, which we had only been in a matter of months, I walked out onto the platform and suddenly, in the middle of worship, the entire back wall disappeared. Are you ready to see what happened? You want to see it? Now, don't, don't get in your flesh, you know, and laugh about my hair or the high pitch of my voice or my southern accent. Please don't do that. Please don't be distracted by that. Please watch a vision, a real life vision. Watch. The Lord showed me Satan wearing a great crown, a huge crown. Oh, God, I can still feel it in my bones. Oh, God. <laughs> and the crown, you know how a crown has points and things? Well, the Lord showed me this huge crown of stone. Parts of it glittered. Parts of it were stone. And the Lord showed me Satan with his crown on. But he had a, a look of fear upon his face. And the points of the crown were the skyline of Columbus. And God said to me, he wears the crown of this city. Oh God, oh God. Then the Lord said, but in not many days. And the Lord showed me a sword. Much greater than the enemy. Oh, and, and the sword swung three times. And the third time, come here, David. Give me that mic stand. Take that microphone off of it. Give me that mic stand. I just heard somebody said, this is the strangest thing I've ever seen. Well, honey, hang around this year. Stand out there, David. Stand right there. Stand right there. Turn sideways. Stand right there and turn sideways. That's it. And the third time that sword came down, and it struck the enemy. See, right now the pain of it's going through my body. I feel the pain in my body. <laughs> and the sword came and struck him right across the knees. 
and he fell and he fell and as he did the crown rolled off his head oh God. now wait now wait there's more stand up David there's more the Lord left the vision with a question and then just like you'd take a zipper and shoo, it was gone as the crown rolled off of his head the Lord asked this question who is there among you who is strong enough and brave enough to pick up the crown and place it upon his head so that was that vision was given to me in 1985 I was 28 years old that building we were in was 1,200 seats we filled it up three times on Sunday morning Wednesday night Thursday night and Tuesday night I was 28 years old but I was full of vision every dream carries the potential to give rise to a movement Never ever say, oh, that was just a dream. Oh, that was just a vision. You're sitting in that vision right now. Things had already accelerated. I mean, we started the whole business in 1979. It is now only 1985. It had been six years from nothing. Some of y'all got nothing right now. Wonder what you could have eight years from now if you'd get a dream, if you'd get a vision. What you respect and honor comes toward you. What you disrespect and dishonor goes away from you. If you have proper respect for spiritual dreams and visions, they will be attracted to you. Stand up, uh, Brother Soprowski. Uh, I laid hands on you a few weeks ago, and I prophesied to you that you would be receiving many spiritual dreams and visions. How many of you had since then? 13. Wait, 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 wait. He, he just sat here and listened to the same thing you did. How many of you had? You're like Mary and Martha. You're cumbered about with so many things. Do you know you can get so busy with the work of God you forget the God of the work? You didn't hear a word I said great God in heaven so let me just let me just go through real quick what happened the next two years two years do you want to know it because like I already know it okay you're shouting over Canfield because you lived it okay so that was on New Year's Eve of 1985 so the next day was 1986 right the year of, of 1986 I traveled with Dr. Lester Sumrall and preached in at 28 years old in the biggest churches in Japan in the biggest churches in the underground of communist China in South Korea in Singapore in Hong Kong in the Philippines and Hawaii on the way home I was 28 years old. What? What? A 
August the 1st of 1986. No, 1985, same, same year, 1985, we held the first Dominion camp meeting. 1985, in April, only four months after that vision, God gave me another vision called the laws and sowing and reaping resurrection seed. I preached it for seven weeks. It wasn't very effective. It has only brought 120 million plus dollars into the body of Christ. Yeah, if it was your 120, you'd be shouting. I didn't say $120. That was four months after God showed me that vision. Four months. Four months. Whew. Well, are you listening? Seven months later, we built the first office building with the first resurrection seed offering and paid for it, and we were totally debt free everywhere. No debt. You, you, you can't get a car and not be in debt. No debt. Shout, God, give me a vision of no debt. Whew. Seven months later, no, I already told you that. Oh, eight months later, God gave me my first airplane. My first airplane to go preach 100 to 120 nights a year on the road and bring every penny of it back into this ministry. Not a penny to me for any of it. I've had people say to me, oh yeah, you work Elder Canfield to death while you're out there playing on the road and making all that money. Not a penny from a book a tape, a CD, a New York Times best-selling book. I know preachers that have bought entire 3,000-acre ranches with their royalties off one book. I've never kept any of it, and I've had New York Times bestsellers. Why? Because that's not my vision. That, that's not my vision. If that's your vision, okay. In 1986, we launched World Harvest Christian Academy. It's now Harvest Preparatory School with an enrollment of over 800. And the finest Christian school facilities anywhere in the nation. That same year, within one year of that vision, we broke ground on this. I was 28 years old. The largest sanctuary complex on the East Coast of America. And none had ever been built anywhere by anyone under 40 years of age. I'm talking to you about vision speaking. I had a businessman talk to me. He said, when we were in the 1200 seat building and I announced that we were gonna purchase this property right here, he came to me and he was weeping and he said, I had a dream. I had a dream two weeks ago. I said, tell me about it. He said, I saw, he said, it didn't make any sense to me. He said, I saw this massive complex of buildings halfway between Route 33 and Route 70, and the traffic was backed up to get into it all the way to State Interstate 70 and all the way to Interstate 33. That vision was fulfilled in 1987. Cars were parked. The first thing we ever did in this building, cars were parked 
all the way to 33 and all the way to 70 and all the parking lots full. Sometimes y'all need to realize where you are and what you're listening to. You say, yeah, but, you know, yeah, but, I mean, you know, you know, I mean, it's not like that now. Well, what? It's not like what now? Then I was only reaching the people I could get in this room. Tonight, I'm reaching the entire world. What are you, what are you talking about? And I know the seasons of life. Because 30 years after God gave me that vision, he said, now I'm going to tell you, you've earned me telling you what the three sword swings mean. Am I telling the truth? Did I ever try to say what those three swings were other than I have no idea what that is? For 30 years. I didn't make it up. I don't say God said when God didn't say. There's a curse on that. The, it got revealed to me when I turned 60 years old. And God spoke to me because I was being attacked with vocal cord cancer. And God said, I'm going to show you what those three swings are. Because you just entered the third one. I said, what? What? He said, yes. Do you remember what Brother Sumrall told you? I said, yes. He said, every man's life is divided into three stages. The first one, when you are born to your 30th birthday, those are your gathering years. The second is from 30 years old to 60 years old. Those are your using and developing and building years. And then from 60 till God takes you to glory, you don't do anything but pour everything God's poured into you, into every person you can possibly pour it into. Dear God in heaven, Juanita Bynum, one of the greatest preachers that ever took a microphone, preached at Dominion Camp Meeting, stopped in the middle of the thing, made me stand up. This is 18, maybe 20 years ago. Made me stand up and face this crowd. There were 8,000 people here. And she said, you don't know who he is. She said, do you think he needs to stay here? She said, what is there left for him to do that he hasn't done? Now, I'm not talking about me. See, that's how pinheaded you are. I'm talking about a vision. I live this vision. It's why God gave me my voice back. Because I'm not finished. I told this staff the other day, I'm going to teach you whether you want to be taught or not. That year, 1986, we broke ground on this building that was inside one year from the vision. Inside one year, Brazil, Zambia, Norway, Kenya, Kuwait. Yeah, but I had a seat Sunday and there were a few empties. Uh, Trinidad, Tobago, France, India. It's Wednesday night. Uh, by the way, in October, October the 11th to be exact, I married that young woman I had been chasing for seven years. Now wait, now wait. I had been in a relationship with her for seven years. We had never held hands in public. We had never sat beside each other in public. Well, was there something wrong with you? No. Was she not attracted to you? Oh, come on. 
I had a vision. And I wasn't selling it out for flesh. We got married that same year. That same year. 1987, we changed the name of the ministry from Word of Life to World Harvest Church after I asked my pastor for permission to do so. Why? Because I have authority because I'm under authority. Okay, you're, you're, you got that stupor again. In November of 1987, in less than two years from the time God gave me that vision you just saw, we opened the doors on this 5,200-seat tabernacle. Less than two years. Less than eight years from five people in my parents' backyard to this. Oh yeah, as the first service. Look, look, there's, there's Elder McKee, right there. There's Elder McKee. There's one of our first two elders, Ken Ross. He was the best man at my wedding. There's Miss Patty McKee. This lady right here with the blonde hair, was one of the greatest local church ministers I've ever seen in my life to this day. Because she was eaten up with vision. She didn't have her ideas and her this and her something else. She grabbed the vision and did it. Amazing. I want you to have a vision. There's Laverne. That fellow right there with the kind of bushy long hair, that's Laverne Tripp. He was the premier soloist on the Trinity Broadcasting Network for 20 years. He's just there on the second row. Just came to church. Now let me explain something to you. If you have a vision, it's talking. It's speaking. It'll get so inside you that you can't tell the difference between you and it. God told me the next year in a trip to South Africa, standing in the Santon Sun Hotel in Johannesburg, South Africa, God said to me, I'm going to add to you those whose hearts I've touched. You will be known as Mahanium. You will bring all camps together. Black and white and Asian. They'll all come together. You know what the Columbus Dispatch said about this church? Black and white. Dance side by side in their happy stocking feet. And at one point not so long ago, little pitiful people led a rebellion because PRP was a racist. Look around. Look around. Bless their little hearts. I pray their souls are saved in the day of judgment. And other than that, I don't have time to come off this wall. Not for you, not for anybody. If I wouldn't come off of it for JKP, I ain't coming off of it for you. Just know that. God wants to give you dreams and visions. I just shared with you the greatest vision of my life. And today, it's still talking. People drive by here and say, what in the world is that? Our church is bigger than most malls. 
Half a million square feet under one roof. All paid for, too. Yeah. All paid for. How good is God? How good is God? I pray for you right now that the spirit of stupor and distraction comes off of you. That you are able to focus on the vision. That you are able to focus on the dream. And like Walt Disney said, I heard your Holy Ghost. Like Walt Disney said, if you can dream it, you can have it. Come here, Miss Deborah. Come here, Miss Deborah. Just when I said the word Walt Disney, when I said the word Walt Disney, God said, tell her, tell her because like Walt Disney, looking at a swamp and saw Disney World, so shall I cause the eyes of your spirit and later the eyes of your physical body to see the vision I placed within you. Let no one deter you. Let no one distract you. I, the Lord your God, am Jehovah Jesus Hakaboth. I'm the Lord, strong and mighty. I'm the Lord, able to deliver. I am the Lord, Jehovah Shammah. I am present with you. I am the Lord, Jehovah Jireh. I open my windows to you says the Lord. Blessed be God. Everybody shout, shout online. Shout, shout, shout. Shout, shout, shout. Shout, shout, shout. Shout, shout, shout. Shout, shout, shout online. Walk around your living room. Walk around your bathroom. Walk around your kitchen. Walk around and say, I shall have it. I shall have it. Get thee behind me, Satan. The vision is for an appointed time. I will wait for it. The vision will speak. 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 I shall have it. I rebuke you, Satan. I will wait and I will see. The glorious manifestation of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Give us dreams. Cry out. Give us dreams. Type it online. Give me dreams. Give me visions. It has not yet to be seen what God will do for those that love him. Uh. Uh, come up here and stand with me, Elder. I'd just like to have your anointing next to me. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Open up your spirit. Open up your spirit. To hell with your little thinking. To hell with your smooth knees and your lack of prayer. To hell with a vision you have for your children. Let God give you his vision. Yeah. Dreamers and visionaries change the world. Start with your world. You know why most people I'm, I'm hearing the Holy Ghost just really, really, like really plainly. The reason most people never get a vision is because they never served one. Well, well, true. Never served one. Never served one to the point of sacrifice. I can smell my pastor. took his shoes off of him. I took his socks off yes, of yes, him. Yes, 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 yes. And nobody paid me. I paid him. Yep. 
I never went to see him without money in my hand, ever. Not ever. Now you can't even get staff people to tithe. It's true. They don't serve a vision. That's not serving a vision. No, sir. That's serving themselves. I better not get you started. I can tell what's on you right now. Come on. Come on. If you don't have Elder Bill Canfield's book called Sheepdogs Among the Flock. The What's it about? Tell them what it's about. It's about the art of assisting your pastor. The art. You think he knows anything about that? <laughs> I learned it here. Because he has been serving it since what year? 83. 1983. 93. 2003. 2013. And y'all look down your nose at him. I've had brat preachers look at me and say, I don't want to be a Bill Canfield. Do you know what my response was? Honey, you don't have to worry about that. You won't ever be close to a Bill Canfield. Ever. As long as you live. He's what everybody else shot at and missed. And they won't ever have one either serving them. They won't ever what? They won't ever have one serving them either. Oh, no. No. One of them had to come to me. He said, I'm going to go pastor. I said, God didn't say that. Well, who are you to tell me what God says? I said, oh, excuse me. No one. I thought I was your pastor. Yeah. Yeah. But People, all you wanted to do is eat my grain and leave your dung. People call you their father, and their then father. they don't listen to what you have to say to no, them. No, because they know more already. Yeah. I will never, as long as I live, know what my pastor knew. Never. Because right. I didn't get to be with him enough. Yes. In my study, I have two sections of books. The over 220 that I've written, and then the other whole shelf, nothing but him. Yep. And I listen to it over and over and over and over. That young man right there, come here. That young man right there, never does not hear a word preached from this pulpit. That's right. Ever. Ever. And I'll come in and ask leaders. Well, I was at the lake Sunday. Oh, well, that's good. Uh, what did I preach about? <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. Do you know? Yeah. Because you make the effort. Yes. Do I pay you? No, sir. No, sir. Do you bring me money? Yes, sir. Do you sow into this? I don't mean me personally. Yes. Yes, sir. It's, I yes, want sir. You yes, every time, sir. Every time. Yes, sir. Every time. Like, and it's, and it's an I'm, honor. I'm afraid to ask him to come. It's an honor. Because I know he's going to bring money. I don't even want to ask him to come. It's an honor. Because it's like embarrassing. But that's not the reason you ask him. No. The reason you ask him is to make a deposit. Yeah. Because because he has yeah. ah. the vision yes. in there. Yes. He has it in there. Hey! I release to you dreams and visions. I release to you peaceful sleep when God guards everything about you so vision can flow into you so mighty and miraculous dreams can come to you. Yes, yes. My healing anointing was birthed in a dream. My healing anointing was birthed in a dream when I was 17 years old. My God. Laying on my back, getting ready for a high school basketball game with speakers on either side of my ear. Tell him about it. And the roof of my room disappeared. And God showed me, me in a crowd, and they were all 
African people, yes. like African, not Af African American, African people, yes. Yes. as far as I could see. And I, there was somebody else preaching and I was trying to get to this woman who was horribly, horribly deformed. And I said, God, I don't want to be on the platform. I don't want anybody to know. But if you will touch this woman, when I touch you, I'll give you glory for it the rest of my life. I'm watching this on my ceiling. And I reached out and touched her. And she was made completely whole. And God said, from that day to this, I will place my healing anointing in your life. So be healed yes. in your body. Let those yes. lumps come out of your breast. Yes. Let that TMJ disappear yes. from your jaw. Let your knees be healed. Let your liver be healed. Let your back be straight. Let your muscles be strong. Let your eyes be keen and not dim. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be God forever. Who type in there have vision have dreams serve vision serve, serve dreams serve, dream. serve it serve. until your knees hurt yeah, serve yeah, it yeah, yeah. until your back hurts serve it